Hey there, Solid Rock Church family and friends. I am so glad you joined us for our midweek service. And um, man, did we have a time with uh, our friends from Russia. If you were in those meetings or watched them on uh, YouTube or uh, face Facebook, I think is what it is. If you watched them on those uh, resources, you know, instead of being here, uh, I know you were blessed. We had people come and tell us about watching them on YouTube. That's pretty exciting to me because we worked for about the last year to get everything ready where we'd have our own YouTube channel and could actually broadcast on YouTube. So it was very exciting to me that there were actually people watching, you know. And uh, man, the comments were good. And I actually went home one of the nights after the meetings. I think it was actually Sunday night. And my wife and I put on the meeting with Pastor Noel preaching. And I was real pleased with the quality of our broadcast. So I'm just telling you that. Uh, Pastor Noel and the message was great. My, what a blessing he is to the body of Christ and to our church. So I know if you participated in any of the meetings that God really blessed you. Pastor Michael, Timothy, and Vadim all had great testimonies and stories of things that God had done while they were here and how God really impacted them and the different things that were said to them. Each service so unique and each service absolutely led by the Holy Ghost. And that's really what God told me in the beginning is that they would be Holy Ghost meetings. And I, I believe that they were that. And Pastor Noel, um, you know, he, I, I did not talk to him about anything that I felt the Lord told me to tell Pastor Michael. And then still, uh, when he got up there on Saturday night, he started to prophesy. And some of the things he said were absolutely word for word. And they laughed and thought that was so funny, you know. But it was the same Holy Ghost, why not? Should be the same word, you know. So anyway, it was, uh, it was a great time. And I'm really glad you participated if you came. And uh, as a church, you guys brought a tremendous supply. And it's very difficult for you to realize how much you blessed actually another nation. I remember when Dr. Dufresne would have uh, those conferences, he called them first fresh oil meetings and then started calling them camp meetings. And we would go there. First time he invited me was 1994. And so we went 1994 and I've gone every year since all the years when he was there and then even after he's gone to heaven we still go to those meetings and had never missed a one and will not miss a one so it's uh it's really a very powerful time and the church people in those meetings when they come the church people always bring a supply and then the people come and draw on that anointing they put their faith on that anointing that was on dr Dufresne or pastor nancy even when uh, dad hagan was at doctor's church you know those meetings were amazing uh, of course, because it was Dad Hagen or Dr. Dufresne or Pastor Nancy, but also the supply that the congregation brought. So congregation, you brought a tremendous supply and, it, and just absolutely blessed um, the nation of Russia. Uh, Pastor Noel said that Pastor Michael would be really the gateway or the open door to all of Europe and that that revival that's going to come out of him and through him is going to impact all of Russia and then into Europe. So my, I just think that we, it was so humbling to me that we actually had the honor of participating with that. So uh, I was overwhelmed many times and uh, by the presence of God, it was so powerful and just so exciting to be, to be a part. So we're talking about healing. And oh, I wanted to also tell you that we still are working on a plan where we can um, you know, be in the, uh, back in the building for more services. And so... It's going to be uh, just a little bit here in about the middle of March that we'll get our, our uh, building worked around where we can be open. And we'll do a um, midweek service at night. It's going to be Tuesday night. It'll be at 7 o'clock. And then we're going to do Sunday morning. Before the Sunday morning service, we're going to do a class type situation. And we'll give you more information. But it'll be great. And I know you'll like it. Part of it will be a class that we'll teach on prayer. And it will be really a, a good class. We'll teach for a while and then we're going to pray. And the Lord de dealt with me that we need to do that for the rest of this year and into next year. So we're going to do it for uh, be obedient, you know. Amen. Let, open your Bible to Luke chapter 5. We're talking about healings. And I want to get back on this a little bit. We took a kind of a break last week with all the meetings during the, during the week. I want to get back on this. Pastor Nancy wrote this book, The Healer Divine. And it talks about what we are talking about. It's a great resource book if you want to get it. We have it in our bookstore. It talks about the 19 healings, and I call them with testimonies, because they tell more than just Jesus healed the multitude or something. There's always some 
uh, special insight into the process of divine healing. In the 19, 12 of them make a direct reference to faith and the other seven make a, an inference to faith. So the one that we're looking at today is in Luke chapter 5. You'll also find it in Mark chapter 2. And this is the one that we've been on. We're just about done with this one. We'll go to another one. But a couple other things I want to talk about. And they apply to all of them because uh, faith is the same for all of them. So we're going to talk about that. And I'm going to read it to you here out of Mark chapter 5, Luke chapter 5, excuse me. And I'm going to start in verse 15. So uh, if you want to follow along, I'm in the King James Bible. And then I'll make a couple comments maybe from the Amplified, but I'm not going to read from the Amplified today. So but uh, verse 15 says, But so much the more went there a fame abroad of him, and great multitudes came together to hear and to be healed by him of their infirmities. That's a very important statement. They came to hear and to be healed. So they came also to, you know, because faith, I said all of these have a, even, or a, either an inference or a direct reference to faith, all of the 19. And so here we know that according to the book of Romans that faith comes by hearing and hearing and hearing, the word. So we know Jesus was the word and the word became flesh and dwelt among us. But so they came to hear, really or they came to hear the word. And as they came to hear the word, we know that the Bible says then that their faith would grow, especially if they would act on their faith or work on their faith, you know. So they came to hear, and then they came to be healed. So if they came with a purpose, then uh, when I was in uh, 2003 in one of Dr. Dufresne's meetings, I can't remember if it was here or some other place that we were together, and he <clears throat> was praying for me, laying hands on me, and he said, uh, Pastor Bill, he said, uh, God is going to visit you this year, and you're going to have a visitation from God. And I was real excited about that. You know, I mean, anytime that there's a prophetic word given, you need to grab a hold of it with your spirit, man. Some of the things that were said in the meetings, you know, you could tell that the uh, Russian people grabbed a hold of those words. When Pastor Noel said something over me, I grabbed a hold of those words, you know. And then you want to rehearse them. You want to continue to declare them with your mouth. Uh, you know, angels get involved when you take the word of God and put it into your mouth and you speak the word according to Psalms 103. They hearken, verse 20 and 21, they hearken to the voice of his word. So you have to take God's word and put it in your voice and then you speak it out and angels listen. And they're there to make the will of God come to pass. So when there's prophetic utterances like um, Pastor Noel gave to Pastor Michael about the double and different things happening in Vadim about the double, then they need to declare that. They need to grab a hold of that and say, Lord, you said that we would walk in the double. And you said that, uh, this, and you said that, and you said the building would uh, you know, do this, and so on. And you, you declare those things because now you're taking God's word, because God said that, and it lines up with the scripture. So you take that word, and you put it in your mouth, and then the angels hear, and they respond. So when we're talking about this, with uh, they came to hear and to be healed. So in 2003, when, when uh, Dr. Dufresne prophesied that over me, I actually had two visitations in 2003 uh, from God. One was in um, April and one was in November. One was on a Thursday and one was on a Sunday. And the one on a Thursday is when Jesus showed up in my bedroom and he said uh, to me, I want to talk to you about the anointing. And so the other one was about faith. And so, you know, Pastor Noel and I were talking about this and I said, it just seems like my messages always are around the anointing which then includes healing and, and how God works, and then faith, which also includes healing and how God works. And so uh, he said, well, that's true. When I listen to you, it seems like you're always around those subjects. And I said, I, I think it's just because that's what Jesus came and talked to me about. He talked to me about the anointing, and then he talked to me about faith. And we've made this uh, known to people, you know, for the last, uh, what was that, since 2003, it's gotta be 19 years, I guess. Uh, that the laws of faith, they work the same for everyone, everywhere, every time. So when we hear about their faith, which we're going to hear about later in this particular story, the laws of faith work the same, not only for this particular individual, but for you. And then the anointing. So uh, when they came to hear, that will build faith. And then they came with a purpose to be healed. That means that they took their faith and they put a demand on that healing anointing that was on Jesus. They already knew about Jesus. 
they already had background on him, know, knowing about the miracles, etc. And so they came to hear him preach and they also came to be healed. And so uh, that's real important that you come always expecting God to do something for you. And then he said, uh, verse 17, it came to pass on a certain day as he was teaching that there were Pharisees and doctors of the law sitting by, which were come out of every town of Galilee, Judea, and Jerusalem. And the power of the Lord was present to heal them. So if the power was present to heal, we would call that a healing anointing was present to heal. The power or the anointing of God was present to heal. And if you go over to uh, Luke uh, chapter 4, when Jesus talks, he said, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach the gospel and to heal the brokenhearted. So we see that anointing comes on Jesus to preach and to heal. And it comes on ministers to preach and to heal. You know, so here we're seeing that, that displayed where the power of the Lord, the anointing of the Lord was present to heal them. And uh, behold, men brought in a man uh, on a bed which was taken with palsy. That means he was paralyzed. And they sought means to bring him in, to lay him before Jesus. And when they could not find by which way they might bring him in because of the multitude, they went upon the housetop and let him down through the tiling with his couch in the midst before Jesus. So in Mark's gospel, it says that they took the roof off. You know, they lifted the roof off and found a way to get him in. They removed some tiles and got him, got him down there. And so, uh, you know, they had to use a rope and set him down on there. And look at what, verse, uh, what Jesus' response was in verse 20. And when he saw their faith, so... Jesus called that faith when they went up on the roof, when they wouldn't take really no for an answer. And that's what faith does. It doesn't ever take no for an answer. And when he saw their faith, uh, meaning when they saw that they took the tile off and they dropped him down through the roof, Jesus called that faith. And so, of course, then it was faith. And he said unto them, man, your sins are forgiven thee. The scribes and the Pharisees, they got all bothered by this saying, you know, what makes you think? You can forgive sins, that's God alone, and I'm paraphrasing. And when Jesus perceived their thoughts, he said, why do you reason this in your heart? Is it easier to say, son, you're, you know, man, your, your, your sins are forgiven thee, or to say, rise up and walk? And then he made this statement, he said, but that you may know that the Son of Man hath power. And this is in verse 24. And that word power is not the same word as this word power over here in verse 19. Um, I'm sorry, in verse 17. And the power of the Lord was present to heal. That, that's the word dunamis or dynamite. It means the explosions of God's almightiness. It's a word that's used for the anointing. Uh, it's used in Acts 19, 11, where uh, Paul was given, um, there were special miracles by the hands of Paul. That's the word miracles in there. That's dunamises or explosions of God's almightiness. And then over here, this word power, that you may know that the Son of Man hath power. That's not the same word in the English they had the one word, they used power, power. But in the Greek, that word there is exousia, and it means authority. So we have the dynamite or the dunamis of God over here in verse 17. And then we have Jesus explaining his authority in the realm of the spirit to actually deal with sin or deal with sickness. That you may know that the Son of Man hath authority upon this earth to forgive sins. I say to thee, arise, take up your bed and go to your house. And immediately he rose up and went and they all glorified God and they were all amazed and they were stuck with reverence, struck with reverence uh, because they saw strange things that day. So uh, what I want to talk about today is this statement in verse 20 about their faith. When he saw their faith, he said unto them, man, your sins are forgiven thee. Now, I already told you that the laws of faith work the same for everyone, everywhere, every time. Now, that was the first thing that Jesus said to me. It was a Sunday morning. Our church was dealing with a couple situations. We were extending our faith and working on our faith to make sure that we, uh, you know, were able to overcome those issues because this is the victory that overcomes the world or whatever the devil's thrown at you. Uh, this is the victory that overcomes that is even our faith. And so we were working on some stuff and uh, Jesus came in my bedroom Sunday morning about uh, six o'clock, I suppose, or five thirty, six o'clock, and he said, the laws of faith work the same for everyone, everywhere, every time. And then he said, and I am no respecter of persons. And he gave me the scripture references. One is in Romans, the first one. Second one is in the book of Acts where God is no respecter of persons. And then I felt prompted in my spirit to get up and come down to church, which I did. 
uh, immediately. And I was praying as I got around one part of the altar. Uh, he said the third thing to me out of Jeremiah 32, 17. He said, there's nothing too difficult for me. So he gave me those three things. The laws of faith work the same for everyone, everywhere, every time. And I am no respecter of persons. Now we're, we're glad about that because otherwise it could be somebody's own person or nationality or, or color or money that would cause God to respect that. But God does not respect a man's person. He respects faith. And wherever faith is present, that's where God wants to be. God responds to faith and God goes to faith. And so when he saw their faith, he said unto them, you know, basically you're healed, your sins are forgiven. And the, and the guy was healed and took up his bed and, and took off. So the laws of faith work the same. So all sickness and all disease is uh, from hell. There's no sickness, there's no disease that comes from God. He does not give like palsy or, or paralyzed people because he's trying to teach them lessons or anything like that. <coughs> Excuse me. <clears throat> all sickness and all disease comes from hell. <coughs> Sorry. And um, so when Jesus has authority over sickness and disease, then he can exercise his authority. Now, in Matthew 28, let's go over there for just a moment. Go back, you know, to the Gospel of Matthew. Because Jesus talks about his, uh, <coughs> wow, it's his authority. And he says this. Um, in verse 18, he said, uh, this is after Jesus rose from the dead. He comes to his disciples and said to them, all power, and that again is that Greek word exousia, which means authority, is given unto me, talking about Jesus, in heaven, look at this, and in earth. And then Jesus later in Mark, actually um, in Mark 16, he said, this power has been given unto me, now I give it unto you. And you can find different references that, to that in the Bible. And in verse 19 here, he just tells you to go ye therefore and preach all nations. And so he, he took his authority that he won or um, conquered the devil to receive. And he took that authority and he gave it to us as the church. When we were seated, Ephesians says that we were seated in heavenly places with Christ. Ephesians chapter 1 and 2. And all of these things are underneath our feet. That he has a position of authority. He's the head, we're the body. And so that authority is with us. So that also, when we were studying this before in John chapter 14, when Jesus said, I'm going to give you my name, and then he went on and said, whatever you demand, faith demand, in my name, that I'm going to do. That's in John chapter 14, around verses 12 and 13. And so you can look it up if you want to take the time to do it. So uh, Jesus said, whatever you say in my name, I'm going to do that. That means that we have authority. And then we find that he gave us authority over the demonic powers of the earth. And we find in Matthew chapter 8 that Jesus had authority over sickness and disease. So when we look at this situation, you and I uh, have been given authority over sickness and disease. So faith, this guy's operated in faith. Well, how, how, how did that work in this situation when Jesus saw their faith? So we know this about faith. If we stand in our realm of authority and we declare with our mouth about sickness and disease and command it to leave, then that's us exercising our faith. So there's some things about faith that I do want to talk about tonight. And let's go back to Mark 11 for just a minute because um, it's important here. If there's 19 healings, 12 of them talk about faith directly and seven of them make references to faith or infer faith, then we need to look at that just a little bit more. So you say, well, we've talked about faith a lot. Yep, and we're going to keep on because through those meetings, again, there was a prophetic utterance about new revelation coming to faith in 2021. So let's look at verse 22. Jesus answering said unto them, this is Mark 11, 22. You have, or have faith in God, the King James is worded. The original manuscript says you have the faith of God or you have God-like faith. Verse 23, for verily I say unto you that whosoever shall say unto this mountain be removed and cast into the sea and shall not doubt in his heart. And uh, underline that, we'll go back and talk about it and shall believe that those things which he saith shall come to pass. He will have whatever he says. And then I, I don't want to stop reading there. I want to read verse 24. Therefore I say unto you, what things soever you desire when you pray, believe that you receive them and you shall have them. And you know, I don't want to stop there. Let's read verse 25. 
We, you know, we so many times we stop at the end of verse 23, but verses 24 and 25 is still what Jesus was saying about faith. He's responding to the disciples' amazement that the tree that Jesus spoke to the day before has dried up at his roots. Peter makes comment about it in verse 21. Jesus responds in verse 22, and he said, you have the faith of God. And then in verse 23, the beginning of that in the original manuscript could be worded like this more, or could be said like this, that, uh, and this is how it works. So Jesus, turning to the disciples, said, you have the faith of God, and this is how it works. If you would say unto a mountain, and if you would believe in your heart that those things that you say will come to pass, then you will have what you say. And then he went on and said, Therefore I say unto you, what things soever you desire, when you pray, believe that you receive them. And, look at verse 25, When you stand praying, forgive. If any have ought against any, that your Father also which is in heaven. And um, I had my Bible, uh, the back of my Bible, you know, the, the, um, the binding. I had my Bible rebound. And when they did that, they put that page in Mark over here in Matthew. <laughs> so if I want to read that, and I found it here. If I want to read it, I have to go back over to uh, Matthew. So it goes on and says that your Father which is in heaven may forgive your trespasses. But if you do not forgive, neither will your Father which is in heaven forgive your trespasses. And so um, he talks about faith. This is all about faith. This is how faith works. If you believe in your heart, and we've talked about that, and we're not going to take time to spend it tonight anymore. We'll talk about it again. But your belief is critical, and your saying is critical, but also is your forgiveness. And when you stand praying, forgive. So here's a problem, uh, really, in the body of Christ with many people, is that they, they don't live in forgiveness. They don't, we call it walking in love. You got your Bible still? Go over to the book of Galatians. And I'll show you something, because all of these 19 healings with a testimony, uh, they all have reference to our direct reference to faith. So in Galatians chapter 5, in verse 6, uh, Paul writing to the church at Galatia, he says this, For in Jesus Christ neither circumcision availeth anything, nor uncircumcision, but faith which works by love. So we're finding in Galatians, Paul is saying that really your faith won't work unless you walk in love. And that's exactly what Jesus said right here in Mark 11. When you stand praying, forgive. Because if you have ought, and I looked that word up, uh, and ought just means anything. Little, big, whatever. If you have any kind of ought against anybody, see it says against any, then your faith isn't going to work. So even though all of these healings, 19 of them, have to do with faith, if, you're, if you are not walking in the love walk, you're not allowing the love of Jesus to be uh, shed in your heart abroad with others, then your faith isn't going to work. There's no way that your faith will work. And you'll find yourself equipped with resources that don't function because your faith isn't working. So uh, we've had people, you know, come up and ask us about healing and they said uh, well how come some people are healed and some aren't healed and there's a lot of answers for that in the Bible we know this that it is never on God's side when Jesus came he lived he died he rose again from the dead and he purchased your healing so it's not on God's side so if the healing is not working then we need to pray and ask God what it is sometimes it's just as simple as this that we have had ought against other people and because we're not forgiving and we're um we're, we're, we're walking in unforgiveness or we're walking out of the love walk, our faith isn't working. And so we need to check. We need to do a self-check and find out what's going on, why what's not manifesting in our life. Healing is the will of God for you and for me. Walking in divine health is the will of God for you and I. And so the Bible keeps telling us how we can do it. And, uh, you know, when he says in, in um, Luke chapter 5 that it was when Jesus saw their faith, then that means that they were walking in love. They were abiding by the laws of faith that work for everyone. And so then it produced a healing in that young man's life. Amen. Isn't that great? Hallelujah.
Well, listen, we're going to receive a Wednesday night offering. And so um, you can text to give, 612-431-1420. I want to thank you for your support during the meetings with the Russian people. And we were able to bless Pastor Noel and bless the Russians. And we got blessed and other people got blessed. And if you sowed seed in that meeting, then you put a demand with your faith, just like this guy did here. You put a demand with your faith on that seed to multiply because 2021 and beyond are going to be great financial years for you and I and for the body of Christ. And I am putting a demand on that, that there will be great increase in the body of Christ in our church and, and you know, all the other churches, but our church is part of that. And so we're going to see great increase here and we're going to be uh, faithful and do what God asks us to do with it and we're going to see great things happen. Right? Right. Amen. Love you. Now we're going to take the offering. You ready? 612-431-1420. That's the text to give number. And so you go ahead and participate. If you need to pay your tithe, do it. And if you want to just sow seed, go ahead and do it. If the Holy Ghost is prompting you, make sure you obey. You want to make sure this year in particular that you listen to what the Holy Ghost is telling you about your money and you obey. Otherwise, you'll find yourself behind what God really wants to do for you. And we Talked a little bit about that Sunday morning, and so you can go back and pick that up on the, on the broadcast. So, Amen. Love you. I'm going to pray for you. Father, thank you for those that watched tonight or any other time, and you bless them abundantly. And Lord, that the spirit of wisdom and the spirit of revelation and the knowledge of him about faith and about healing would produce biblical results in these people. You open their understanding to hear, and they'll receive, and God, they're going to be blessed and prosperous because of it. In Jesus' name, amen. Love you very much. Uh, we will see you Sunday morning, 10 o'clock for prayer and 10.30 for the morning service. So be blessed and have a great week.